Good night, good night. Welcome, welcome to another powerful Kingdom School of Empowered Living. We want to welcome our audience. We want to welcome our BFM family. We have a very exciting, powerful topic this morning, this evening. We want to make sure that persons, they know what's going on around us. Of course, we have a responsibility here at BFM to make sure not only uh, talk about what's going on kingdom-wise, but yeah. of course, what's going on in our world and in our country. Mm -hmm. And so we have a very, very important topic for you today. Navigating Climate Change, Strategies for Disaster Prevention and Protection. And we have a very special guest, and I'll let Pastor Kirsch introduce our special guest here tonight. Great. I mean, I'm really excited about what we are yes, about to discuss today. Yes, it's a very good topic, I mean, very have, important uh, topic. We have a, a very intelligent young man with us today. Yes. He is well known as the professor here at Bahamas Faith Ministries, but today in his position as the a person who has been in meteorology for, for a very long time, I want to just read a little bit about his bio. Mr. Uh, Trevor Baston joined the Bahamas Aviation Climate and Severe Weather Network uh, in October of 2022 and was appointed Senior Vice President and Director of Meteorology. Uh, Mr. Basin retired from the Bahamas Public Service September of uh, 2022, having served for 45 years, all at the Bahamas Department of Meteorology. Uh, Mr. Basin began his career as a meteorologist, uh, as a meteorological trainee, in December of 1976 and ascended the ranks to be promoted to the director of Bahamas Department of Meteorology in January of 2014, a position he held until his retirement in September of 2022. You know, before the, uh, before our, uh, today we were talking uh, and talking about his years with the, with, the, with the meteorological department, I was reminding him that my father was, a, was the training person over the meteorology department. And I remember as a little boy between seven and 10 years old, actually uh, spending some nights sleeping there when he worked the night shift. <laughs> and so it was really great uh, getting to know a lot of them who worked over the meteorological department. He was one of those persons I got to know. But today he is here really to talk about uh, the navigating climate change strategies for disaster prevention and protection. And so we're gonna have Renoir, he's gonna start us off by asking him the first question. We're going to go back and forth and just have a, a time of discussion around how can we go about uh, looking at strategies for prevention and protection when it comes to climate change. Mr. Trevor Basin, welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We're so Pleasure happy to, to have you here. here. Yes. It's good to have you. So, thank of you. course, we, this, this session is definitely to give our audience and our BFM family some knowledge. Yes. Um, and we want to talk about how we can help, how we can help our climate and our environment as kingdom citizens. We know we have a responsibility to manage, to manage the earth. And so one of the first things that we want to talk about though is, what is this climate change? Mm -hmm. A lot of persons have varying theories on what it is and how it affects our environment. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about what climate change is. Okay, thank you. Well, firstly, I must make mention of uh, global warming. Yes. yes. They consider that to be an influence over climate change. And what global warming is, the Earth has an average temperature of about 15 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, through his uh, industry, <laughs> agriculture, and the yes, like, has yes, been yes. influencing that. Uh, through the emission of uh, carbons into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, we see just from the uh, physics, uh, the atmospheric physics of the atmosphere, that the, that would cause the uh, Earth's temperature to rise due to what they call this greenhouse effect. And what that is is when the shortwave radiation from the sun mm -hmm. uh, is impacts the Earth. It comes through and it reaches the ground and is also reflected and the like. But however, when the ground uh, re-radiates it as long wave radiation. Mm -hmm. And so the earth or the atmosphere consists of uh, water vapor for the most part, then carbon dioxide, okay, uh, methane and uh, some nitrous oxide. And so those gases mm -hmm. tend to trap this uh, long wave radiation yes. and that's considered as heat and it warms up the atmosphere. So that's technically the greenhouse effect. Right. So that global warming, that because we've been introducing these carbons into the atmosphere is therefore now affecting the climate. Mm -hmm. Now the climate itself, forgive <laughs> being so probacious, but yeah. the climate itself uh, 
is over the long term, and we usually model it for periods of 30 years at a time. Wow. So every 30 years, we do mm -hmm. different parameters of temperature, wind, uh, radiation, uh, wind speed direction, and that sort of mm -hmm. parameters of the atmosphere. And we give average means and anything else we measure from the on in is compared to that. Right. And so that we see is influencing the climate over these 30 uh, year periods we see changes. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. isn't like a, this isn't something that just started yesterday. This mm -hmm. has been an ongoing, yeah. an, ev an evolutionary kind of change where things have just been accumulating to cause this change in our atmosphere. Yeah, because man, mainly man induced changes. Yes. Now, <laughs> in, in uh, 1750, they had the Industrial Revolution. Mm -hmm. And the thing about carbon and in the atmosphere is that yeah. carbon takes thousands of years before it is assimilated mm -hmm. in the atmosphere. So the carbon from 1750, wow. right, was released in the atmosphere, still here. Yeah. Wow. So those building blocks and it remains in the atmosphere. Wow. It isn't something that just goes away. It stays there. Wow. And the nitrogen and the that lasts more like uh, 12 years or so, and then it's assimilated. But that is the problem: the carbon in the atmosphere. Wow. wow, wow. So when we think about this carbon in the atmosphere, you know, they're saying, you know, a lot of what's happening in the atmosphere then also is also impacting us as human beings. So what we're getting is this emission we need to have emission control and what, 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 how, do we, how do we deal with that in terms of how uh, controlling what's happening in the atmosphere? Well, the general thinking in the scientific community is to have ways mm -hmm. by which we uh, produce food, mm -hmm. by which we consume energy, mm -hmm. that it isn't uh, carbon uh, intensive to okay. release back into the atmosphere. Because mm -hmm. remember, anything that is released in stays mm -hmm. for thousands of years. Yeah. And so they wish to devise uh, new technologies and the like mm -hmm. in order to remove the carbon uh, footprint mm -hmm. or to not have uh, carbon into the atmosphere. Right, right, now, right. in saying this, <laughs> right, this is what it really means. Uh, Anything that is carbon specific yeah. and goes into the atmosphere, because it takes so long to be assimilated, mm -hmm. it is not called renewable energy. Okay. It's not like uh, from the sun or the wind or geothermal, that sort of way. Mm -hmm. That's renewable energy. So, uh, so those sort of aspects or uh, alternatives, all right, to carbon emissions for energy and production of food and the like. Yeah. yeah. So when you look at the, you look at the scriptures, right? Um, Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 28, that's, that's our focus for today. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our, in our image. And he told us to rule over the fish of the sea and birds of the air. But I look what Isaiah says. It says in Isaiah chapter 24, verse 4 to 6, The earth dries up and withers. The world languishes and withers. The heavens languish with the earth. The earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the, st the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilt. In other words, when we think about the atmosphere, when we think about the earth itself, we have a responsibility as human beings to guard and protect what yes. God has given us. Yes. God says rule over it, take care of it, and it seems as though mankind has really, really contributed to what we're experiencing today. In what ways would you say that mankind is contributing to what we see happening all around the world today? What are some of the things you think that we've contributed so much to it? You've mentioned about the carbon. Um, how, are we, how are we contributing daily and how could we prevent it? For instance, let me give you this case in point. When, mm -hmm. I was in, when, we, when my wife and I were in school in Miami, um, you couldn't get your car licensed, right? without it going through emission control. Mm -hmm. So you had to go, you had to, go to, the, to uh, the road traffic in, in, in the United States. You've got to go where they actually put a, a test, test on, mm -hmm. in, in, in the pipe to see how much carbon is being emitted from that particular vehicle. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I think about that, that was over, that's almost 30 years ago mm -hmm. when we were in school. But the Bahamas itself, 
does not do that with licensing cars. No. We can actually bring all kinds of old cars into this country over 10 plus years or more, but we're not, we're not being responsible, even as it was some 30 years ago around the world. What are your thoughts in terms of how we are contributing to it and what can be done to yeah. kind of address that issue? Well, Pastor, <laughs> you said a mouthful there. Yeah, yeah. But I, I must remind you that this problem with carbon and its emissions mm -hmm. start from the industrialized nations I got you. and not you know, from the third world uh, mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So we have inherited the problem because they put gigatons of mm -hmm. carbon into the atmosphere every year. Yes, okay, yes. and so now you come here to the Bahamas, yeah, and you look and you say, okay, we don't manufacture vehicles, mm -hmm. no. okay? Yes, yes. And so we have allowed, <laughs> <laughs> we have allowed these things to come in to right. burn, but um, the carbon emitted from an exhaust and that from a power plant or cement plant mm -hmm. and the like with using fossil fuels, right, right, you know, right, right. oil, gas, etc. right? Well, that is minuscule, right, compared to what, you know, the, what has been uh, put into the atmosphere, mm -hmm. right? By such plants would we emit here in the Bahamas. So agreed, that does not mean that we should not do our part, but that Think of it, the technology mm -hmm. to have such a great influence, right? So you don't have this carbon footprint. I think will be originating from the more industrialized and in what you can scientific nations mm -hmm. with them with more manpower, mm -hmm. people and resources. Yeah. So they are the problem, all right? But we are the ones being affected mm -hmm. mainly by it. You see? And then another thing I'm better at is that, let's say the aircraft uh, flying over the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the uh, aircraft movement animators that mm -hmm. we have, right? When we look, there is a density of aircraft flying over our airspace uh, between Miami and a uh, ragged island area mm -hmm. that, you know, is very, very dense. Well, those emissions are not coming from Bahamas, eh? <laughs> <laughs> you with me? And you are <laughs> so therefore, again, yes, right, yes. we need to answer you more succinctly is probably to have regulation mm -hmm. or for them to at least, okay, uh, in some way, uh, have responsibility, I suppose monetarily, right, yes. <laughs> for what they are doing, you mm -hmm. know, to the Bahamas. Because, again, if you ever see that, you'll be saying, my goodness, I yeah. never thought so mm -hmm. many thousands of flights a day right. transverse the Baha yes, Bahamian yes, airspace. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, I think it, I mean, it's so sad when you say that even though we are not the ones directly impacting the, the carbon and what's in the air, mm -hmm. of course, it's still affecting us. And uh, the Bahamas being a country surrounded by water, mm -hmm. we are seeing or we are getting the effects of that. Right. Um, and of course, we've seen it over the past several years with yeah. the extremity of the, the hurricanes and the hurricane season, yes. which we are now in, why, which is why we're doing this topic here tonight. Oh. But of course, what is that connection? What is the connection to the, the change in the temperature in our waters mm -hmm. and the connection between the climate change? How, and how, and how okay. is that going to continue to? Yeah. Mm -hmm. to yeah. A get very, more extreme. A yeah. Very good question. You mean, in particular, it means with extreme hurricanes. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Absolutely. Now, one of the drivers for hurricanes are warm water. Right. You mm -hmm. need that moisture, and obviously, the more, uh, the warmer it is, the more intense we expect the hurricanes to be. I mean, this mm -hmm. like hurricanes 101. There are other things like the El Nino, when mm -hmm. that uh, weather pattern develops, remember you get the westerly winds, mm -hmm. shears off the tops of these hurricanes to suppress the development. But right now, uh, we are going towards La Nina conditions, mm -hmm. and that's where we don't have those uh, westerly winds uh, mm -hmm. uh, to blow a shear off the tops of the hurricanes. And so we're expecting more intense storms. So mm -hmm. it's the energy, all right, that's given to the 
water mainly, right? Or the sea surface temperatures, we mm. like to call it, or to the oceans, right? That uh, is a good driver mm -hmm. for the development of these uh, tropical cyclones, meaning tropical depressions, tropical storms, mm -hmm. and hurricanes. So the more energy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or the hotter it is, or the warmer mm -hmm. the temperature, mm -hmm. right. we expect more energy to assist these mm -hmm. systems in developing and strengthening. Wow. And we look at it just the other day, we had barrel uh, in the Southern Caribbean developed. Overnight, it went from some 35 miles per hour to June 28th, I think it was. And over 24 hours, it, was, it went from, from that to a hurricane uh, category four. Yes. Uh, you, you know, within, within just a matter of a wow. day, 24 mm -hmm. hours. Yeah. And so when we look at that, when you think about how rapid yeah, a change can take place, in terms of preparedness, man, it's, it's really putting persons in a, in a, in a, a difficult position uh, to prepare for such a hurricane. I remember back in the day, a fisherman goes out to fish and he doesn't know. And he has to really try to read the clouds and read the weather. He goes out to fish and then, you know, you read the Bible, you say, boy, and they say, and a, and a strong wind developed and a hurricane came, you know, and so um, persons were caught off guard being out of the sea. How, how are we looking at technology-wise being able maybe to detect, or are they able to detect such a quick and rapid uh, pace in development? And can they be able to identify that this one is going to be a quick one? Is that, is that something that we're able now to, by technology maybe, to determine? Like uh -huh. a barrel. Okay, again, a very good question. Yeah. You, you ask these sort of questions in our MET forum. <laughs> you know, we, you, get us, you know, you get us going. Yeah. Now, we have been using computer models, mm. computer weather models. You have the Japanese, you have the mm. Europeans, you have the UK, you have the US, Canada, mm. and all of them, right? And they, with the same thinking, say, mm. We need what is called an early warning system. Yes. And that is what you're really mm -hmm. implying here. That, that's what we would term it. And uh, they've been using all sort of instruments uh, such as buoys, radars, mm -hmm. uh, satellite imagery, right. all towards having an understanding and to give, to identify possible uh, areas, mm -hmm. right? in the general circulation of the atmosphere where systems could develop or mm. decay. Right. And so toward this end, uh, we here in the Bahamas, we are under the National Hurricane Center mm. of the U.S. and the World Meteorological Organization have put them as the resource uh, mm. force. And so they uh, and the National Weather Service team uh, scopes and maps out areas, the seas, mm. the land, as far as even Africa, uh, there in Africa where you have uh, violent thunderstorms mm. uh, there over the Sahara, believe it or not, and they advect or move off of Africa uh, west towards mm. uh, the western, at, uh, the eastern Atlantic, and so as they move towards our area, right, mm -hmm. we start trop, uh, we start tracking mm -hmm. these tropical waves from there, or they call them easterly waves mm -hmm. or tropical waves, and we start to monitor them from off the the coast, and so they these models, uh, they are very good uh, of late in tracking these systems once they have developed mm -hmm. uh, the tropical storm, right. 39 miles per hour and greater to 73 miles per hour. And however, when they are weaker than that, mm -hmm. the tracking is off, yeah. all right? Now in terms of what you call with barrel, we call it rapid intensification. That's yes. 35 miles per hour or in a, within a 24 hour frame. Mm -hmm. And that happened twice with Dorian in mm -hmm. 2019, yes, okay? Yes, yes. So there, once we get these, this uh, rapid intensification is difficult to forecast mm -hmm. the models. You know, <laughs> you know, God gave man his brains, right, right, but he's right. trying to really catch <laughs> up and, and follow, right? Yes, and yes, uh, yes. so, see, when we are scientists look at nature, 
mm -hmm. right? There's some key things that God has put there that mm -hmm. make things work and act. Right. And once we discover how, we have a better idea right. of right. their movement and to assist us with forecasts, mm -hmm. you see? So man has used instrumentation and again these computer weather models that can uh, analyze hundreds of thousands of different mm -hmm. scenarios in a few seconds, yes. whereas we, with ourselves as humans, right, it would be difficult for us to do. Mm -hmm. And so they are some of the things uh, that they uh, have been used, okay, to see how best we can get a better early warning mm -hmm. yeah early warning system mm -hmm. you know, for these developments. So these hurricane systems seem to be happening a lot earlier now. I mean, I think we had, uh, back in 2005, we had like Joachim happen in July, like somewhere around like July the 8th. Uh, so, so this June one, I think has been the earliest in terms of a category four. Cate know? Yes, category yes. four, category five, five yes. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, you know. But however now, all right, our hurricane season mm -hmm. is officially from the 1st of June mm -hmm. through the 30th of November. Mm -hmm. But that is the period when only 97% mm -hmm. right, of uh, the tropical cyclones develop. Mm -hmm. So the other 3% takes in the <laughs> other six months, you see? Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, other than this year, all the, the, the six previous years, We've been having hurricanes developed, you know, yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, as well as in, May, <laughs> in, yes. in May. In May, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, yeah. We have that, right? Yeah. But again, uh, uh, Beryl set a record, yes. Mm -hmm. as a strong, yeah, that was very strong. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so we are hoping that that's not... Yeah, right. <laughs> we are praying. That's yeah. not what it's yes. to come. So yes. when, we, when, we, when we think now about uh, preparation and uh, prevention, when mm -hmm. you look at disaster, what would be, as Bahamians, when you think about now we're in June, you said they're happening earlier, in terms of our preparedness as a nation, as a people, how do we go about making preparation for such? Okay. And, and is the government looking now, maybe this is another question, but mm -hmm. in terms of what they think is the standard now? Because I mean, the standard is now changing, right? In terms of the building code and, and preparation. How are we looking as a, but first of all, one first question is yeah. how do we prepare? Yeah. How do we prepare, uh, you know, how do we prepare for this? Well, the responsibility really for having the Bahamas prepared mm -hmm. is given to NEMA, the National Emergency Management right, Agency, which, which, I understand which has been power. absorbed yes. Yes. into, mm -hmm. you know, uh, for, through the National Disaster sure. mm -hmm. Agency. Well, uh, every year, NEMA and along with the Bahamas Department of Meteorology, mm -hmm. we would go out to schools and uh, businesses and whatnot, give mm -hmm. talks, right? Mm -hmm. And we and flood the media, you know, with advertisements on preparedness and, mm -hmm. and, and the like. Yeah. So uh, that has been, over the many years I've been at the department, has been quite a, a good way, mm -hmm. right, to Get people, you know, in in the mood, uh, or get them with the thinking f to be prepared that these systems are on the way. Yeah. But the Department of Meteorology sends out the alert system. Mm -hmm. All right, um, we will have an alert watch warning, mm -hmm. an alert. If we have uh, two and a half days away, mm -hmm. then a watch two days, and then a one in 36 hours. Mm -hmm. So we do give that lead time. And also, uh, we have booklets and flyers prepared, all right? You can go there to Nema Gladstone Road mm -hmm. and get these uh, flyers, and they give uh, information on the different types of mm -hmm. Uh, preparedness according to the uh, warning or, or the uh, the level of alert that has been that has been given, but also when we start our blitz, um, included in that is all of what is needed for mm -hmm. the season. Uh, when an alert is issued, what you should have. When a watch is issued, what you should have. When a warning is issued. Yes, yes, so yes. all that. So to cut a long story short, there's literature given. Mm -hmm. And there's also uh, uh, opportunities for 
uh, the Department of Meteorology and NEMA to advise the public on such. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have a question. Yeah, yeah. so I, I, I was listening and I, I'm just so interested in, in the warning that we are getting um, mm -hmm. as people because I know a lot of times you, you try to educate persons and that's right. what we're here to do tonight. Just yes. give them information and let them know that you have to be prepared, mm -hmm. right? And so I know in your capacity sometimes you're, you're a part of that campaign to inform um, Bahamians and persons alike that, hey, mm -hmm. these hurricanes are getting more and more intense. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be prepared. But what, what more can government organizations and NGOs do to make sure that payments are ready um, for these, 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 these hurricanes and, and disasters of that nature? Okay, we would advise you in the bulletins, mm -hmm. all right, what is the, the, the strength or category mm -hmm. of the very, tropical very, yeah. cyclone, mm -hmm. its direction, its probable impacts. Mm -hmm. Now, what we have been doing and continue to do since I demitted office two years ago, we have what is called impact-based forecasting. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that instead of me just telling you exactly, you know, uh, the usual way of uh, latitude, longitude, uh, what the winds would be like in the probable direction, mm -hmm. right? What we would do now, and this is part of what the Bahamas Aviation Climate and Severe Weather Network that I'm a part of, we want to now v visualize. Mm -hmm. So what we will do is say, let's say wherever you live, right? right. right? We will have that, uh, we will have a 3D, mm -hmm. all right, imagery, uh, uh, the forecast and the 3D imagery. So when we said that uh, storm sewage would be at a certain height, you'll be able to see mm -hmm. your house where the water would be, yeah, right? right yes. And yeah, this okay, would yeah. be given to you as a forecast. Mm -hmm. So now, right now when we come and we say, well, uh, the system is to approach a certain area, we don't even go down to a settlement specific. Mm -hmm. Now we, we, our thinking is to yes. do that. Mm -hmm. And we say, well, if you now see the probable impact, all right, then that would make you wish. Yes, because yeah, a lot of people, yes. they just say, <laughs> yeah, they don't take it seriously. They, they, they don't take it seriously. They hear, they just say, okay, they can't see that. I, I, I think so, that's very so good. So we're doing yeah. the, that visualization. Right, right. Yes, that, yes, that would be very good. What, yeah. That's what we are hoping. Uh, would yeah, and you hope, and your hope, and your hope, I guess, is, is to make sure that if they can now visualize it, right. then yeah. they can see the severity of it, mm -hmm. and and now the need mm -hmm. for the okay, wow, this is yeah. this is really this is really going to be X, Y, and Z. Yes. So we nearly need to. Yeah, so if the forum here is a little different, right? Yeah. I could press the button and let you see exactly what <laughs> we are doing because yeah, we've yeah. been mm. mapping the Bahamas, wow. the territory, oh, and the really night. Yeah. And if you see something, you say, wow, yeah. we'll show where your car would float away, wow, right? Wow. You know? Yes, so it yes. is very, yeah. th that is uh, the next approach. And we are terming that impact based mm. forecast. Wow. We will be telling you, say, now you look and you mm. see exactly what destruction right. was probable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, we're doing this visualization as a forecast. Right. So behind that, we still need to have the forecast right. Right. Or mm -hmm. else you can be again. You can these fancy graphics and <laughs> the forecast. <laughs> nothing happened. Right. 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 Yes. 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 Yeah. I have a question for you. I mean, there's been some theory that something that uh, with this rising of tide over time, they say they say that the, the tide is rising um, and that it can impact the Bahamas over time and in 20 years I've heard some people say mm. that the Bahamas could be underwater. Is there mm. any proof of that? Is there any, okay. you've heard that uh, statement being made? And That's a very good question. Yeah. Okay, An another good question. Now guess what, 80% mm. uh, of the Bahamas, mm -hmm. now, now this, let's say this sea level, all right, and this mm. the land, yeah. right, this is the land, the sea level. Well, 80% mm -hmm. of the Bahamas, mm -hmm. right, 10 feet or less above mean sea level. So mm -hmm. this mean sea level, so we 10 feet or less. Yeah. So we flat, <laughs> okay? And yeah. we yeah. know just from the mere uh, physics that mm -hmm. once you have the, uh, the warming, 
and mm -hmm. the glaciers melting. Well, of course, the waters will we'll begin to, to rise. Mm -hmm. And you have some people, uh, some countries and nations in mm -hmm. India, uh, in Indonesia area, right? They have already, you know, the sea has already reclaimed their land, and they have to go and move physically, move, move yeah. right there. So yes, we are un, uh, under great threat. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. but also with that is that our our coral reefs, yes. all right? Mm -hmm. They are so delicate, those ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So changes in temperature, mm -hmm. slight changes in temperature, all right, affect them drastically, mm -hmm. you know, and they can mm -hmm. die. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That is amazing. So that's, that's definitely something yeah, that that's, we have yes. to be considering, you know. Yeah. Um, we look at also, uh, I, you know, I'm in the process of looking on a personal level, looking at my insurance in my home, and, contents, Ooh. all the kind of stuff. So when you look at it, I mean, the, the, the economic side of it, uh, yes. when you talk about climate change, the price of, ins mm -hmm. of, of insurance, yes. how many you're paying for it, the control now that they have on insurance companies. Um, you know, like I, I was speaking with my, in my insurance company uh, of late, and they're saying, you know, if you, if you determine to switch you, and you go to another company, chances are you're going to end up paying more because right. you're now going you're going yeah. to, to go and do a reinsurance on your place at, you know, at another company. How we, in terms of government, I mean, from your, I mean, this may not be a question for you, I'm going to you anyway, but how, how, how as the government in terms of policy uh, can help to, uh, to, to control from the economic side maybe, or even in terms of how do we look at how the impact of economics is having now also mm -hmm. on, on our climate change? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll have to answer you this way. Now, the government of the Bahamas, mm -hmm. believe it or not, mm -hmm. they, ha they each year mm -hmm. we meet with a certain uh, uh, insurance uh, facility mm -hmm. and we negotiate, mm -hmm. all right, insuring the Northwest, Central, and Southeast Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's how we in the Northwest yeah. to Southeast orientation. Northwest, Central, Southeast Bahamas, mm -hmm. and we ensure you know we work out the different scenarios mm -hmm. using these same computer yeah. weather models yes, yes, to yes. say weather impacts. And so each year the premiums are paid, mm -hmm. you know, in the millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. All right, to ensure the Bahamas. So the government has put in place, mm -hmm. all right, such that it's in case there's any uh, great destruction right. on any area or section of the Bahamas, all right, that uh, monies can be uh, got to repair. Mm -hmm. So they, they have been doing that. Now, when this, of course, for the individual insurer now, well, gosh, <laughs> you know hurricane insurance, mm -hmm. sky, you know, yes, sky yeah, high, but... To be honest with you, we're in the hurricane belt, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> now, for this region, uh, in the Atlantic Basin, the Bahamas is number one all time from 1817 till now, mm -hmm. had the, the most tropical storms, yeah. Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. In terms of major hurricanes, that's 111 miles per hour and greater. Yeah. It is Abaco, mm -hmm. okay? So for the, the 10 slots, we are number one in the region. Let me tell you, the whole Atlantic Basin, yes. number one, number two. New Providence is number four or so. Mm -hmm. And so we are in the hurricane belt. Yeah. So <laughs> I don't know what else you can do, but the yeah. Northwest Bahamas, <laughs> Yeah. You know, uh, Bimini, uh, Abaco, Grand Bahama, the berries in them, mm -hmm. they number one <laughs> in everything. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, they, yeah, they, absolutely. they go to you. So, yeah. so you, obviously you need, and you, yeah, it is best for you to you have insurance. Now, whether yeah. you could afford it or yeah, not, not yeah. it's something else. But mm -hmm. more than likely, right, an event is yeah, expected because we... Mm -hmm. You know, in the, the argument, we, uh, yeah, we, in the top ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so one thing I want to ask, and the last question for me I want to ask is: mm -hmm. so in addition to forums like tonight, mm -hmm. 
What else can churches churches do to mm -hmm. kind of prepare our members or prepare our audience or let mm -hmm. people know, hey, these are yeah. things that you need to put in place? Mm -hmm. What oh, else yeah. can we do? Oh, yeah, good. And, and invite uh, NEMA and the Department of Meteorology to come in mm -hmm. and give talks and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there is something called CERT, Community Emergency Response Team, of mm -hmm. which I'm a trainer. And this, again, was through the Bahamas government, uh, through NEMA, where we were trained to each community. You were trained in how to respond mm -hmm. to an emergency or a disaster. Mm -hmm. And that sort of training, uh, because let's say something happens in your community, you know, whatever event, accident, or or damage from weather, whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? Well, you are in that community, so you can respond quicker than mm -hmm. the emergency services. Mm -hmm. So during that time, you need people knowledgeable enough right, to know what to do. So therefore, again, uh, NEMA and the Bahamas Department of Meteorology, invite them in to give talks and chats on uh, Disaster and disaster preparedness. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be, that would be good. Good. Finally, I'm going to give my last question. What responsibilities do individuals have in contributing to climate change mitigation and disaster preparedness? What would you say that individuals can do on their own? Well, again, be knowledgeable of exactly uh, what instruments or what apparatuses or, or any involvement in uh, yeah, whatever would give rise mm -hmm. to the uh, increasing the carbon footprint, mm -hmm. stay clear, you know, yeah. no more burning of trash right, and whatnot. Right, right. So you need that knowledge, you need that understanding. And again, that can be a forum where uh, someone can come to a church and or is, some, yeah. and, and yeah. give and give talks. I imagine know? being, stay, stay, especially during this time, yeah. be aware of what's happening in the news and what, what's saying, said, yeah. Yeah, what was going on. Mm -hmm. in but, Latin, yeah. but, but also, Pastor, you had said something early and I think it'll tie back. Uh, farming practices, mm. for example. Yes. Now, I had opportunity to go to Harare, uh, Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. and they have something called Foundations for Farming, mm. right? Okay. And their farming practices are such that uh, they, their carbon footprint is virtually nil. How they mm. deal with, with, with farming, not using uh, not using any carbon derivatives and, mm -hmm. and the like, okay? And uh, the way in which they would use mulches, mm -hmm. you know, things okay. on top of the soil right, right, to prevent right. loss and the regeneration. Mm -hmm. And those sort of practices would be good rather than this slash and burn mm -hmm. technique that many yeah, would do. Idea. Yeah, that's a good yeah. yeah. It, yeah. It is and guess what they call it? They, they, they call it the biblical way they mm. somehow went to the bible and expurgated or drew from the bible <laughs> these techniques yep, by yep. which to farm and mm. increase yields and right. they had a 0 0.4 hectare mm -hmm. uh, uh, growth when with these farming methods is yeah, eight right. tons yeah. per hectare yeah that's interesting you said that, you know, because I remember on the islands, man, before they clear a field, mm -hmm. you always burn it. Yeah, <laughs> it's, not, it's not good. As you can see, you put yeah. in the carbon into the atmosphere. You really burn it, yeah. That's so it's really been great having you today. Uh, thank you yeah, so thank much you. Uh, for being a part of this week's Kingdom School of Power Living. Uh, I just want to thank you so much. I'm going to let uh, uh, brother here close us out. Uh, which yeah, so know. Brother Mason, I, I, I think that's very, you ended on something that we could kind of look into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what are some of the things that we could do? What are some of the things that we're doing individually yeah. on our own personal level mm -hmm. um, to kind of minimize our carbon yes. footprint? Yeah. And I think that's the, the, the key and something that we need to take away from this, this uh, Kingdom School of Empowered Living here tonight is what are some of the things that we're doing to help to cause this to be a problem for us, right? Yeah. So what are things that we can do to mitigate that? And I think that for our audience, um, while you're spending time search, researching and looking at different things, mm -hmm. Use that time to kind of figure out, okay, yeah. you know, this problem, as, as Mr. Basin said, is not going away. No, 
Um, it's something that's going to continue to get more and more extreme, unfortunately, because as I mentioned, the Bahamas is surrounded by water. So what are some of the things that you can do to mitigate your carbon footprint, whether it be, a biz whether it be as a part of your individual, your home, your business? Mm -hmm. um, we talk about cars. Yes, we talk about maintaining them. Right. Right. Um, so there's so many things that we can do. And of course, every little bit counts, right? You would agree, with, agree to that, Mr. Basin. Every, every little bit counts, correct? Yes, well, every little bit counts. You know, God gave us this earth. Yeah. And uh, as Pastor Kirsch said earlier, right, he said, you know, to, to dominate a rule over it. Yes. And I don't think many of the people realize that ruling and do the domination of it means that ensure its sustainability yes, but yes, rather yes. they went and they looked ahead mm -hmm. and how they could get wealth how mm -hmm. they could you know and that has been a serious problem because mm -hmm. they don't look right into yes, the future, future to see right. how you are impacting negatively yes. right the earth mm -hmm. and so now the soil is not able to sustain us mm -hmm. uh, properly because it's lacking nutrition yes. and also the, the uh, chemical fertilizers and whatnot that's another story yeah. Yeah. where they used <laughs> them from the munitions from the war mm -hmm. and they realized that when they put it on the field they get good growth mm -hmm. but then guess what they were killing the flora and a fauna in the soil, mm -hmm. all right, so you needed more and more right. and yes. more yes. Mm -hmm. bad practices for yes. the Yes, bad yeah. practices. Yeah. So get knowledge. Get knowledge get is what knowledge. is the main premise behind that. Get knowledge, mm -hmm. get knowledge and understand that there are things that you can do and be prepared and get information as well on how you can be prepared yeah. and the things that you need because, of course, this is an inevitability yeah. and we have to be prepared. We can't dig our head in the sand. We have to be prepared. Yes, right. We only have one island, one country. Yeah. And we have to try to sustain it and make sure that we have it for our, our children and our children's children or for as long as we can. Yes. And so we want to we thank our audience for listening in tonight. And we hope that you are blessed and we hope that you have some information in. And we would encourage you to do your own research and make sure that you are prepared. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you for watching this week's Kingdom School of Empowered Living. If you've been blessed by tonight's program, let us know in the comments section or by emailing us at mystory.bfmi at gmail.com. Just got saved? Let us know and we will send you the book, What Do I Do Now? A 13-step guide by Dr. Dave Burroughs to help you navigate through taking the next steps in your faith walk. Looking for a place to belong? Join us Sundays at 10 a.m. online or in person for our Kingdom Celebration Service here at Bahamas Faith Ministries in beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. We promise you, your life will never be the same. Be sure to join us again next Wednesday at 8 p.m. for another Kingdom School of Empowered Living.